Bam, we're live. Yo, no 7 a.m. show today. Slept, slept, slept. Man, I slept. I slept good. Oh. Is this the right page I'm about to pull up? I think it is. Uh, a dear friend of mine uh, sent me this today. I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, I am not a, a big charity guy. I don't believe in using my platform as a... Um, as an obituary, uh, so you you won't you won't see a lot of this from me. But this uh, this does uh, touch me, and, and the reason why I'm not a big charity guy is because I do a lot of my uh, charity just in my daily life. I am a walking charity and lover, and I give as much as I can. And I, I just I'm a humble, selfless fucking person, as you guys all know. But a dear friend of mine sent this to me, and this story. Um, I want to share it with you. I'm compelled to share it with you. Uh, uh, this is a um, this is a father who wanted to show his boys that a man could do anything that he sets his mind to. It's a father of three boys, five, three, and one. His name is Michael. After a regular sparring session, trying to get back into the fight game to show his sons it was possible to do anything they put their minds to, he had a headache. His wife said he was white as a ghost. He went to the hospital for a scan. They shipped him to a level one trauma center. He lost consciousness en route and died. And I, you know, maybe it's the three sons. Um, maybe it's the fact that he was doing it for his sons. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure why I'm compelled. It's also the charity fundraiser to uh, help this guy. Michael uh, will be at a CrossFit gym called um it's in orlando florida let me see if i can find it. it's called the um, crossfit lion's den let's just share the screen with you guys here one second what's up rich what's up brian what's up oh brian hey rich how's it going pretty good a lot of meetings this morning so just uh plugging away catching up orlando florida uh crossfit lions den the uh april 7th at 11 a.m this is the kind of thing i would take my kid to by the way just to what show stop in oh this dude just for unknown reasons passed away he has three oh, sons what so uh this, april 7th is there a they got a i'm sure i missed all this and you're just recapping it but is there a link or something where you can participate virtually there, you know, that's a great question. I don't, I don't know. I literally just got this five minutes before I went on and okay. it was from a dear friend and I was in the shower and I was stirring. And I'm like, I don't do obituary shit. I don't do obituary shit. Right. And then I was like, you know what? This guy has three sons and, uh, and he was doing it for, he was doing something for his kids when he died. And I'm just oh, like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Totally. Anyway. That's it. Um, as I get more details, I'll share more details with you guys. And I and I knew that Rich was coming on the show, so there'd be a lot of you knuckleheads on. So I thought, what a great way to leverage Rich to help other. Heck yeah, I'm in. Love it. All um, it. did you really do the workout again? No, no, heck no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing a mile of shuttle runs and again, unless I have to, I guess. Dude, I watched that. That I watched that so, video. You watched that? I watched that. It's so boring. Let, let me ask you this. What, I can't even why? believe we, we put it on the internet. I, I told Scott I wanted to punch him for it. I was like, you should have just cropped out the middle of it. Hey, um, what if you I, – I think you guys should just put up a video of you like doing something like crazy mundane, like cutting your nails. Rich cutting his nails. Maybe like you're just sitting in a chair cutting your nails and just see how many views just it gets. How many clip, – clip just slow, like, like kind of creepy. Yeah, maybe some yeah. macro shots of like the nail clipper on your thumb and like a nail flying close off. Close up, close yeah. up. Yeah. yeah, Rich brushing his teeth. It's a whole series of you just doing mundane just shit, doing stuff. Rich slicing oh. a piece of cheese, but extremely efficiently. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Rich doing twelve thousand shuttle runs. Uh, Rich, why not take out the the touch on the ground? Why I, I, after watching you touch the ground so many times, I'm like, why do they have that in there? Like, I get it for sprints or for yeah. agility training or for my kids' tennis, like if for punishment for suicide drills. But it, but really, it seems like what CrossFit is doing to me, um, they just want you to run 
but they need you to stay within camera shots so they're not having you run 400 meters on a field. So they've the, the shuttle runs a hack. Well, if it's going to be a hack, then just don't make them touch the ground. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not against the shuttle run. It is a, a way to test some type of running, I guess, um, in the form that we do, the virtual. It's hard to, like, measure 400 and, and do all that type of stuff. So I'm not necessarily against it. I just – it was just so boring to do a half mile of shuttle runs in one section. And I don't know, it was just very boring. I actually, I was talking to Brian, I shared him a, a workout that I would actually like to try down the road. And it was, you can still do the mile of shuttle, but you know, 25 shuttle, um, five bench, 15 or five rope climbs, 15 bench, 25 shuttle, five rope climb, 15 bench, 25 shuttle, five rope climb, 15 bench and 25 shuttles. So you still get a hundred shuttle runs and it's just a little bit broken up. I mean, it's still pretty boring to do and watch, but I was surprised Rich just uh, conveniently doubles the density of bench press. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> it, it's, it's, uh, it's not doubled. It's close, uh, close. one and a half, one and a half, right? <laughs> a little over, I guess it is double. Yeah. 25 and 20. So you're right. But I don't know. It was just a little bit, a little bit boring. Let the money start pouring in people. Mike Sauer. Sevon, can you please introduce the term testicular fortitude to your vocabulary? I think it would fit you well. What does that mean? Like I have balls that are like strong, strong testicles. I don't have strong testicles. I've never <laughs> seen strong testicles. Don't those, isn't there like somewhere that they like hang stuff from the testicles or is that from their actual? Yeah, no, I think it is. I think I have seen like, like a dude put like a diaper pin through his testicle and like hang oh. a kettlebell from it or something. <laughs> It's a sterilized diaper pin. It's good. I'd um, what a, run a mile of shuttles. What what about the um what about the thumb wrap? You think CrossFit just went to the wiki page, had a bench press, and copied and pasted the wrap to your even, thumb? That, Why are professional? That's my bad. I didn't read that. You know, I tried to to read it and have a couple other people read over stuff, and it just I missed it. That was my bad. But I, it's a safety thing, is my only thinking. Um, but yeah. Is what it is. Maybe it'll is, take me out of the top thirty, and I don't have to do semifinals. Then. There, I don't think they're going to penalize you for that. Uh, I mean, the internet warriors say they should. No shit. Someone thinks that they should. Fifteen percent, I think, is what the the going rate for that is. I, um, I, I Brian, has anyone else gotten away with anything that's uh, equal to a not wrapping? My my thing too is like, do we have to wrap our thumb on? I mean, no, they preached it at level ones for a long time. Wrap your thumb. Or on the pull-up bar, so we're going to make people. You have to wrap your thumb on the pull-up bar. Oh, that's you, you, a bigger picture conversation that you, know, you can't are hook, to you explore. can't hook grip. You can't, you know, whatever. I, I'm. <clears throat> we're just adding too many unnecessary rules. Like, hey, you can't use. You can use grips, but you can't use them on a barbell and you can't use them on a dumbbell. As long as you're not wrapping the thing around and like the opposite way around the thing, use your damn grips. I'm tired of this. Is there, we're just trying to make it too complicated. Like, I think we did a really good job for a long time of not necessarily taking the judges out of it, but not putting so much emphasis on the judge for them to make a split decision, split decision call. It's already a hard enough judge to, or hard enough job to be a judge. And so I think when you make all these unnecessary standards, um, I mean, I'm for standards, like, don't get me wrong. Like there needs to be some set standards, but when you're trying to get it too open, like you can use your grips, but you can't use them when you grab the dumbbell or you can use your grips and you can't grab it on the barbell. Like, as long as you're, I mean, you could do the same thing with the grip if you, you know, I don't know. It's just. Yeah. It's what, you know, what I would say is just, especially on these massive lot online competitions, make it as simple as possible. Simple, simple. For yep. yourself, like for your own yeah. sake. Yeah. What are we looking at? You know, like, um, you know, in one of the things that said uh, on the event four, the thruster um, and row right. workout in the description on the standard, it said something about a snatch. And it was it, it, like, I, it blew my mind. So there's a couple different things. And then like in the video, it says one thing. And then, you know, somebody said, I guess in the video, it said you had to be touching the box to start. I don't know. It's just, just don't, don't make it, don't overcomplicate it. Here, here's the thing. What, I, I know you mentioned safety. Like, does any party just want to be like, no, screw you. That's stupid. <laughs> I'm not about the thumb wrap. I've been doing it for 20 years now. Do you know anyone probably? who wraps their thumb? Yeah, I mean, a lot press? of people bench press and wrap their thumbs. I'm, you know, I you do, I, Brian. I jerk from that suicide grip. It's just something that I've always done. I have fat, meaty palms right here, and it, the barbell just sits there. You know, I just it's just the way I've always done it. So, I mean, it's and not not to say right, it's right. By the way, 
on the test four scorecard, it still says for your convenience, the minimum acceptable weights for the snatches are. And then yep, because we were looking up, you know, because there's a big argument of do you use a 45 pound bar or a 20 kilo bar? And so I went to grab, I was trying to stall as long as I could because I really did not want to do that event 15 5 again. I just, I hate that workout. It's so painful. Um, and so I actually was like, all right, well, maybe I'll just go and add half pound plates so we don't have this, you know, weird discrepancy and end up on a Hiller video. And uh, so I was like, we're going to add half pound plates to make it 45. Well, then Jake went and looked at the standards and says, no, you can use a kilo bar for your snatches. And so, you know, it's just, come on. If we're going to take all this time, clean it up. Yeah. And I mean, that's another one. Like just present a chart like they did for one of the workouts that says, these are the conversions from kilos to pounds for every workout for their in the entire season. Why, like, why would you change it? Like, let alone from the open to quarterfinals, but how could you have the same barbell weigh a different thing for two different tests in the same competition? In the same weekend? competition. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And why would you do that? Like that? You're only <laughs> why creating would you do that? Why would you do that? I like, it's a, I think it's a stretch to, to be worried about safety when you have people climbing ropes and snatching and just doing all sorts of shit. I think the thumb wrap is just ridiculous. What I really think happened is someone just copied and pasted from like some wiki on how to bench press and stuck it in there. I seriously think so. I can't imagine CrossFit. I could see them maybe saying, suggesting you wrap your thumb for safety. Yeah, yeah. But to absolutely. enforce, but to put that, I mean, it doesn't change. There's no Anything. advantage. Yeah, there's no right. like, it doesn't add a new grip element to the movement. It doesn't make it more difficult unless it's just something that you don't do. Um, I don't know. It just, I, I, until somebody brought it up on the, um, one of the media guys brought it up that somebody commented, I didn't even think twice about it. So I love it when you're in the crosshairs, especially when it's, no, I just, love it too. It when it's just it for just completely just bizarre shit. Well, it says you have to have your sock pulled up below your uh, knees. It says your <laughs> knees have to be shown full and like you have your socks pulled up covering a little bit of your knee. I would just uh, let Rich preach. All right. Preach. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I'm, I, I like, I, said, <laughs> I think we did such a good job for a long time of, especially like you're saying, Brian, of, it's on the, for the virtual stuff, making it easier on the judges, easier on interpretations of stuff. And then now we're just adding all these kind of arbitrary things. So I don't have all the stats here, but I think this guy, Josh Lehrman, has given $100 every time you're on. Josh, man. Thanks, Josh. I wonder what it, you know, what's the record? One time someone gave $499 for something. I can't remember what it was for. That's crazy. Was that you? Were you on here when that happened? I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that was crazy. Okay. So, but either way, you don't, you can't, you're not stressed about it at all. No, no. I don't, I mean, I'm just, I'm doing the virtual stuff. Uh, I'm trying to get Dan to come out here, do him with us semifinal. So, uh, have some fun. And, uh, I think Easy was talking about maybe coming out here. So maybe get the old band back together and yeah. have yeah. some fun. So it was cool. I mean, it was a fun weekend of, I mean, it's the first time I've done, a weekend style other than the open, you know, doing multiple workouts by myself and shoot a bunch of years. But this is the first virtual competition I've done with multiple workouts. So one of the guys, Shane, I did pretty much every workout with him. He's just a, a member here that does the class once a day. So that was, that was fun. And then we had Jason Grubb and some of the other mayhem master athletes. And, uh, it was, it was a good time. There's a dude you have in your videos. If I would have known, if I would have had Caleb here, I would have pulled it up on the back end. But there's a dude in one of your videos who looks like Fraser. You were snatching with him. And then there's another dude you have that looks like Maliolo. They weren't here. No. Do you know who I'm talking? <laughs> no, I know. But do you know who I'm talking? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yes, I know they weren't there. Um, but but uh, do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, I don't. There's know a guy you're snatching. I there's a guy you're sna you're snatching with Tyler. There's a class going on or something or train with Rich, and it's okay. you and Tyler and Gee, and uh, and there's a guy like from certain angles looks like uh, looked like Matt, and I thought that was Maybe funny. And then Sam later, from Easter. Hey, guys, it? Say, it could be new Sam, new Sam, um, Michigan Sam as we call him, or um, what he actually refers to himself as unfit Sam compared to Sam Cornway. Yeah, don't uh, call him New Sam. That reminds me too much of my governor, New Sum. <laughs> oh, New Sum. Oh, no. Yeah. No, yeah I'm, I'm done with Sam. that. All right, Michi Michigan Sam. How about yeah. that? Michigan and Sam. And then there's another that, guy on, that looks like on, a – another um, guy on Angelo's team, He's and he's pretty strong. I guess strength oh, yeah, numbers Sam are up there. Strong. So it, would, yeah. it might be him that was snatching with those guys. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely – definitely Michigan Sam. 
Does he kind of look like Fraser, like like a younger version, less weathered version of Fraser? He's kind of square, like like you know, same haircut, body shape. Yeah, probably close. I can see and, that. And then there's another dude that looks like the um like a uh, uh, Belarus Malio. version of uh, uh Malio, like a little more European Russian Eastern Bloc. You know what I'm talking about? It wasn't Angelo? No, 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 no. Who else? I know what video you're talking about. I'm trying to think of who would have been. I don't even know if he was in that video to be honest. Okay. Anyway, I should have taken clips. We should have. Malio was here a couple weeks ago. Uh, quick side note from CF uh, Talk. Okay, if you insist. Um, I'm sure Rich doesn't mind talking about other shit. But Rich, uh, do you hunt bighorns in Alberta? No, would you? Would you hunt Ab- bighorns? Absolutely, I would. He's not going to hunt little horns there. My <laughs> brother is a terrific guide. We could set something up if you're interested. Programs at mayhemnation.com. Email us. I'd love love to talk about it. Yeah, we. Uh, I actually just put in for some preference points in Colorado. So anybody listening that uh, is into Western hunting, your deadline for Colorado big game hunting is today. So by, okay. I think, 8 p.m. So uh, d- define preference PSA. points. What's that mean? Well, you have to apply for tags and um, all these – because contrary to popular belief, um, hunting is not just going around murdering, murdering defenseless animals. There's actually some conservation to it. And so the state only puts out a certain amount of, uh, you, you know, license per year. And so to get better units, you actually have to buy points or preference points. So there you go. Uh, maximum number of preference points for the 2021 big game drawing. There you go. Drawing the maximum number of preference points a hunter can have for any season is 19. I still don't Oh, what are preference points in hunting. Allocation starts with the highest points holder and works its way downward. Oh, to mean who can hunt in what area? Yeah, so some units are more prime units, so less traffic, um, you know, different animal uh, numbers. And so what they'll do is you actually have to, like, have some seniority, basically, to get um, a better unit. So what we've been doing the last – couple of years kind of the any old asshole over the counter tag where you can just buy a tag and go out and screw it up yourself. Yeah. And so the more we've done it and actually Matt Chan's helped me a ton on kind of learning the process, him and one of our other guys, David, on how to get points and acquire points to go to more optimal units. And units means is, is location zones. Yeah. Zones basically Man, different you're states, in, different you're... states are completely different. So Colorado is one that has a bunch of units. I think New Mexico and Arizona are completely lottery draw. Um, and then I think Wyoming and some others do points. So it's confusing. You're learning a whole new language. I am. Um, hello, Rich. Hello. Um, tell Rich Sr., Ron, and I say hello. Hello, Trish. Do you think this is a case of inept games team trying to look busy by creating a bunch of rules? No, I don't think so. I think it's just probably a lack of either internal communication or just, I don't know. You know, it's uh, not having – a large media team or a bunch of people looking at stuff. I think, you know, like um, I think there was uh, somebody posted a video in Boz talking about decentralized leadership. And, you know, when you have a bunch of different um, organiz- or parts of the organization doing different things, it's hard to make sure you're, you know, th- somebody needs to just check it all. And I don't feel like there's th- things always fall through the cracks and it is what it is, but it's frustrating when it's at this level and we've been around for this long and we're having these problems. And you have to understand, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand we, we ju- uh, education is the lowest it's been in the United States in the history of this country. And so for them not to understand kilos and pounds, uh, CrossFit Inc. Is, is just par for the course. How's that? <laughs> Johnny, 499, will we ever see the Mayhem Classic again? I don't know. I'd love to do some type of event here. Um, we had a ton of fun doing it. Um, I do miss the, I liked the sanctional model, um, for the athletes. You could just go compete a bunch and make some money. And I know it was a little bit confusing and, um, but I think with a little bit of insight, you could figure out a way to use the point system and people collect points at certain events and, um, go back to something like that. I feel like what we're doing right now is more like a, uh, privatized regionals, which is, there's nothing wrong with it, but, um, I liked, you know, having the ability to to host a couple of different events and athletes to have a couple of different places to showcase what they've done the season or not, you know, do one event and be done or um, I don't it know. Also, it also, you know, eliminates the the scenario of, well, I just happened to get sick on the wrong weekend. Yep. Yep. I, yeah, I, I liked hosting and being able to, you know, 
put a little bit of our flair on some events. You know, I, I would like to, there need to be needed to be a lot more oversight um, or at least some type of accountability on the programming from the programming side. But um, I thought it was they, they were getting to kind of a cool point with it. And if it could have been more cohesive and more, um, I, like I said, just more, a little bit more oversight, a little bit more communication from the top down to the, the events, I think it would have been a pretty cool system. I actually, uh, a few years ago, worked on a, a plan that would have that could, take, could have taken the sanctional model and integrated a point system like you were talking about. And I'm sure I still have the work that I did on it. And it, you know, it, it, it would, I think, create, create some, some freedom for athletes in terms of competition and competition structure, but also a little bit more opportunity for fans to potentially see the athletes they want to see compete in some different venues and at different times of the year. Yeah, I think, you know, I think people loved the regionals and the regionals were cool and are, were fun at the time. But the way it's grown, I think from an athlete's perspective, having the opportunity to go to a bunch of different places, you just have to figure out, hey, how do you qualify for it? And I'm sure, like you said, you figured that out. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm tired of it changing. So maybe we should stick with this for a little while at least. But in another world, I did like the sanctional system from an athletics standpoint and from an event standpoint, you know, have a little bit of of fun and be a part of the season versus just a competitor. Um, uh, Simon, uh, Rich just said Dan Bailey's name to you. Um, why, why, bring, why, why, Daily. why bring Dan uh, Bailey out just for, just for old school sake for like, yeah, big, for have some like... fun, throw down a little bit. He's, uh, he's 21st, I think right now, uh, me, him and China had a text thread all weekend, just complaining about how awful we feel and how old we are and reminiscing on the old days. So it was a good time. And, and, and easy was part of that too. You, and when I met you, it was you, Dan and easy yep. training at uh, Tennessee tech, right? Is that the yep. school? Oh yeah. Yep. Tennessee technological university. And any, any, any crossfitting going on there still? I don't really know. One of the uh, assistant coaches, Hank, he goes here to the, to the gym. So nice kid. You, um, Oh man, look at this. God, I love it when you come on. Uh, here we go. A uh, Miss Car Redow, uh, Sevon, please go snipe hunting with Rich. What's that? I'll mean? take What's you snipe hunting, man. Come on. Is that shoot squirrels? Snipe is an imaginary animal. So anybody that you isn't into hunting, you tell them let's go snipe hunting, uh, and you trick them. Um, uh, s- since uh, he seems easier to get, would Rich be interested in doing a dating advice call-in show? Oh, <laughs> you mean easier than uh, Danielle? Uh, someone also asked if this is a um, – if it's clickbait to say that uh, Rich is going individual again. I just took that line from uh, the CrossFit Mayhem Empire's uh, they uh, loved YouTube it. page. Oh, man. They love they love the clickbait stuff. I, I don't think they clickbaited. I, I th- are, so I mean, are you technically competing? Individual. I, are mean, you com- I, I put my scores in. I paid my $50 to the people at CrossFit. So, yeah, I guess I did compete. Are you are you compete uh, the so you guys go from here to the semifinals? Brian, has he qualified for the semifinals? It's not he is in a qualifying yet. position currently until I get my fifteen percent deduction for deduction <laughs> for your if, fat meaty palms. Yeah, my fat meaty palms. Look at those things. If if he does get that um, deduction, will he still be qualified? Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's then I'll Brian, do the semifinal. You will do it. Yeah, I might as well. I'm at home. I'm okay. gonna work out anyway. I that's probably I I'm ninety nine point seven percent sure I won't be in Madison. I'll leave point three on the table for you. Won't be in Madison competing, or won't be in Madison at competing. All? Sorry, I'll be in Madison for sure. I I mean, we'll have some athletes there, so I'll be there for them. But yep, yeah, you'll probably have a half a so dozen. S- or so so Maybe. something has happened. Something has happened. Uh oh. What has happened? I, you tell me. How's your hip? Well, why? How could you be so sure that you're ninety nine point seven percent sure? Uh it's just I'm. I'm one. I'm doing the Leadville race. Really got want to get super um, into and concentrate on that. And what is the Leadville race? It's that hundred mile mountain bike race, and I want to okay. try to go sub nine hours to get the the large belt buckle. Okay. Um. So that's going to take some real concentration on that, and then also when is that? Uh, the weekend after the games. Okay. And then um, I also like the kids. This is the last year before they start going to school. And so I uh, really just want to concentrate on we're going to got a couple trips planned and uh, we're going to go to DC a little bit and then try to do some, 
some baseball games. Trice is getting into baseball. My girls like doing that type of stuff too. So I don't want to be so hyper focused on training for something, and I don't want to do something half assed that I can't. Uh, if I'm going to go, I'm going to try to win. So, um, yeah, just not not what I want to do this summer. But you will but do it, semifinals. Yeah, I'll do semifinals. It, Brian, if he qualifies for um, after the semifinals, if he qualifies for the games, will they backfill? Well, that's a great question. Um, Rich, can you still hear us? He, someone probably called him. Rich, does, oh, I don't think Rich owns understand. a laptop, so he does everything from his phone. Potential spam. Uh, he, Rich, he was asking me about backfills. And I'm not sure if you're even aware of this, but for the individual divisions, do they take from, people? They don't give backfills? they backfill for individual. Well, so it. it the language is, of course, not uh, abundantly clear. But for the individuals, it's it says that they w- will likely backfill, basically. Okay, or we may yeah. backfill if, if there's a significant if, number of spots. I guess I'll, I'll reach out and say, hey. The Masters I'm, divisions, it specifically says they will not backfill. For oh, either the, so that's, that's definitely for the semifinals. Oh, no, you should do it. Don't listen to us. We have no fucking idea what we're talking about. Just, this but is I just three homies. To, no one can hear us, Rich. Still do it. I don't, wanna, I don't want to take somebody's spot if I know I'm not going to I don't give a go. fuck. Fuck them. We want to see so I, I'm not, I'm not, sh- I'm not sh- actually certain about semis to the games, but for quarterfinals to semifinals, oh, okay, it says you. that they will not for Masters. And I, I don't really, you know, I was going to ask you if you could speculate as a reason why. I can't really that's think of one. That's ridiculous. It's on, why, it's I mean, as long as there's, yeah. Why would you not do that? Especially if you give them like, give them a week to, you know, that, yeah. That... Well, and I'm just looking like specifically in your division and scrolling through the list here. And like the guy who's in 10th place, he's also on a team that's qualified. I don't know, top 10 in the world right now. Yeah. There's another guy that's in a, on a team who's sitting in 30th place. He's going to compete with Zach George's team in England, Will Kane. And so then I look at the guys that are just on the outside and I'm like, well, they're just not going to get an invite because yeah. Why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever for an online competition. It's not like you're, you know, ordering jerseys for somebody and they're not having a name or a number on it. That's and we've, you know, we've been talking about this and you know sometimes it's less abundant or it's less relevant when you're not in the situation. Now, we, you know, being a master's age, you might be more privy to it. But like that's half of the population that signs up for these competitions is the master's I mean, athletes. Exactly. Like you know, why, why, why would, would you, you not? not well, and. And getting rid of the occupational games, I think, was a huge misstep. Um, that's why Mayhem's going to host some occupational games on our platform. So stay tuned for that. But, yeah, I, that's, that's your community. Like your masters and your occupational members are uh, – it doesn't it's, make sense. The, the occupational stuff is really shocking to me because – It you blew t- my mind. You know, you're talking about between Bosman – uh, Justin Berg and Eubanks alone, something like 50 years of working for CrossFit. Like you definitely know that this thing, how this thing started. Like I said, we, we sat down uh, when that, that came out and we're going to, we're going to do something and host something on our May on sugar wad. And then uh, like Angelo, we programmed the workouts yesterday. So Angelo does his, um, his uh, everyday hero track. And so, I mean, it's perfect. He's a firefighter. Like we, we want to serve that community. It's, it's, it blew Angelo my has his own track. I would say, like you guys should reach oh, yeah. out, reach out to Matt Chan, reach out to Bill Grumman, like reach out to these uh, Larry Moss, like these yeah. guys that are critical parts of the community that are also occupational, you know, absolutely members it, around the world and build up the, the participation in that. For sure. Yeah. No, How tarted is it? They don't have occupational games. We, you missed it when you were peeing. Uh, I wasn't peeing. I forgot my coffee. Oh, uh, okay. But I pre- what kind of coffee pre- is that? Uh, oh, Tabor Road Street coffee. coffee. Nice. Um, but yeah, we were just saying that mayhem. We're gonna we're gonna host an occupational games on our on our app on the Sugarwood app. So I, I can't even fucking believe that. I, it blows my mind. That one is a complete misstep in my opinion. But that's but just don't my worry. Opinion. But don't worry. They have the uh, adaptive class. Uh, Thirty different adaptive class athletes. And listen, it's not. I'm not, I'm not against the adaptive class. I told you, I'm very interested to see little people compete. No, but to me, and whether you're talking about the adaptive divisions, the occupational divisions, the age group divisions, it's how you present the information. And when yeah. you just write a rule that will backfill for individuals, but we won't for masters, what message are you sending to that community? Masters if you aren't suddenly as don't have an occupational games on the leaderboard. And, you know, you, you know, people are going to ask about that. And when they ask about it, you're prep, you were pre- what you were prepared to say was we're focusing on things that matter. Yeah, that the wording was not the most. Somebody didn't pass that through their uh, 
their chain of command or through their. Uh, <laughs> that was a mistake on Bird's hired. part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a mistake. They've got someone working in the White House, I think, that wrote that uh, transcript. <laughs> there would have been more stuttering. A Dillberry. Dillberry. Dingleberry? Oh, no, it's not there. Yeah, Dingleberry. Uh, 499 from a foreign land. Hi from Angelisa, the CrossFit place. Rich, the CrossFit place. Rich. Great to see where mayhem is now. Those early days in the life of Rich videos were an inspiration. Thanks, Dillberry. Uh, Rich is the Rich has the coolest shirt. I like these shirts. They're uh, they're just kind of like performance, old school camo. So I like them. Speaking of shirts, seven. Are you serious with that one? This it's a good shirt. <laughs> Solid shirt. He's just sucking up to you. I Listen, in the in the um. In the, uh, I'll do some really sucking up now. In w- when I was t- uh, 23 years old, I was sitting at an outdoor a- amphitheater, uh, listening to some music and smoking weed and throwing frisbee. And there was a guy in front of me, and he was and he was sitting in a pair of board shorts, and he had no shirt on. He's barefoot, and he he's kind of like had his knees up by his chest, right? And he was leaned mm-hmm. over, and he had these crazy fucking lats on him. And I remember being 23 and thinking, oh, my God, could I get those? Could I get like and look at you now wings like that And my whole life? No one's ever complimented me on my body except one person. And it was at the CrossFit Games one year. And I was filming and Rich came up behind me and he put his hand under my armpit and squeezed my lat and goes, look at those lats. Mm-hmm. This is a true fucking story. Though, now, my wife never complimented me on my body. There's no, <laughs> there's no, it's, it's nothing, nobody. I think once when I was a, when I was 19, my mom told me that I, she thought I had knife's calves. There you go. When you were 19. So it's hey, like my mom and, and imagine up, you know? that's a true story. No, I mean, that is just insane. You just need to be told you're looking good sometimes, you know? Yeah. She just yeah. And I was like 18 years to think about what she could say nice to you. Hey, shut up, David. It's not, <laughs> it's not a story to laugh at. It's, it's a drop to one knee and shed a fucking tear. Listen, it was crazy. He's competing at the CrossFit games and he walks by me and grabs a hunk of lat and says, nice lats. I was like, holy shit. That Ooh. was probably, that was 10 years after I'd seen that guy who was 23 with those lats and wanted them. Like, I you guess got him now. Look at you. Look 12 at you. million pull ups later. Strict pull-ups. <laughs> yeah. All them strict pull ups. Uh, Matt Burns uh, asked Rich if he's ever smoked weed. I have never smoked weed. Uh, my dad. So, my drug talk with my father. Um, my dad, my parent, both of my parents were super. Um, you don't have to answer that. He didn't give any money. No, no, that's fine. I'll okay, answer okay, it. okay. My, my, both my parents were very trusting and were like, my dad want. So we're out in the barn one evening. I think we were working on a truck or four wheeler. And he goes, uh, son, we need to have a talk. And I thought, Oh no, here comes the birds and the bees. And he oh, goes, man. ah, 15, something like that. And he goes, uh, you're pretty good at baseball. He goes, I was pretty good at sports. Uh, you have a chance to play in college. He said, I did too. He said, then I started smoking weed. Made oh. me not want to, made me not want to do shit. I don't recommend you smoke weed. And from then on, I never touched weed. How did that what? hit you? Why was, was that a good, t- was that an important talk? Are you glad? Yeah, I think had so. That- it was more of like, Hey, it's on you. Uh, this is my experience. This is what I went through. And, um, he goes, you do what you want, but it made me lazy and made me not want to do shit. And I, I just never smoked weed. So I have had alcohol. I've partaken in the sacrament, but, um, uh, I love I, it I how drink, it's the sacrament. <laughs> what movie is that? Is that Wedding Crashers? I don't have sex, but I have made some babies. I am Rich Froning, it's super Christian. Crashers, I think. Yes, yes. I God, I uh, love you. I I I drink probably two to four times a year. I just it. The older I get, the le- if I stay up past eleven o'clock at night, I feel hungover the next day with no alcohol. So uh, I just don't like the way I feel if I drink alcohol. So I'll do it every once in a while. I'll get. But the problem is. It just amplifies my personality. So I usually either burn things or wrestle oh. or, you know, get, get a little rowdy. So you are, ve- you are very, I was thinking about you. You don't do anything. Um, there's very few things you do tepid. Like if I were to, yep. if I were to put a, if I were to be like, okay, Rich, today we're going to sew. And I put you in front of a, a sewing machine. You would like grab that wheel and start spinning it. You would grab the knee. When you thread, you would come at it. The, the thread hard. To towards, it out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're not a tepid guy. You're not afraid to like, if I, the first time you shoot a gun, you grab it and hold it. You're not a, 
Yeah. Whatever you're no, doing, you're not tepid about it. I'm not halfway in on anything really is the problem probably. So I know that. Well, and you, that. and you ooze with confidence. You, you, and by confidence, I mean, you believe in what your fingers and hands and mind and the coordination you have. If I give you anything to figure it out, like, and, you know, you know what I mean? No how like some people you give them a tennis racket and they'll be like, they, they have like a fake humility. If you give them like a tennis racket and they're like, you would just grab it and be like, here, let, turn the machine on high and fire some balls at me. I'll give it. Yeah. I'm going to, if yeah. I'm going to do something like crossover showed up in individuals and I've, I've never done a crossover to that point. Yeah. Um, well, because, and so for an hour straight, <laughs> well, I think I you just, had a Joe Biden moment or you're hiding something. No, no, no. I'm, oh, uh, okay. I think it was a, yeah. Uh, Senior moment. I don't know what happened, but um, yeah. So I practiced them for like an hour and was very frustrated and, then I had to just go and figure them out. And then I think two or three, two days later, uh, it was just a bad, very angry uh, when I can't figure something out. And then you got people trying to tell you what to do. It's like, just let me figure it out. Leave me alone. You know? So uh, what about the first time you kissed Hillary? Yeah. Were you, were, were you tepid or, or did she, did she kiss you or did you kiss her? Or do you No, no, probably no tepid, no tepid. No. Do you remember where you were? Uh, probably my, at my mom's house. Yeah. Bring her to your mom's house. Couch. Kiss. <laughs> yeah, for sure. How old were you? Oh, man. Uh, when we first met, I was 22. And, and, and did you know when she came over that you were going to kiss her? Like, did you know, okay, this girl's coming to the house tonight and I'm probably going to kiss her? Um, actually, you know, you know what our first date was? When? Fast and Furious. Wow. The fourth first I one? can't believe the she fourth, went on a second date with you. Is that really a movie you can take a girl to and cook with? Absolutely. Heck yeah. All yeah. right, so you, I told you I'd only have 30 minutes. I got to get going. Rich, You're lost, good. buddy. Nice seeing you, though. I agree. Brian, good to see you, brother. You too, Rich. See you guys. Later. Fa um, so Fast and Furious on, on, on a TV set or at the theater? No, at the theater, man. That was in the theater. That was circa 2020. So I – yeah, 2009 yeah because i went to get my level one the month after we met after we started hanging out we met probably in january then i got so my level you... one in charlotte north carolina in 2009 in june and then afterwards invite her back to your mom's house oh uh, <laughs> yeah that sounds weird but yeah and and then if you don't and at the time you didn't drink you don't really drink. Uh, even yeah i did at that point yeah, okay then... so maybe you poured her a drink then no she didn't drink <laughs> Yeah, no, she was no alcohol. Wow, first kiss sober. That's that sober. Is, yep, it's love. That, you know, that's impressive. And okay, so back after Fast and Furious, you know. Yeah, that's that's crazy too. Wrestling so now, with Rich Camp. There you go. You got a uh, weed story, alcohol story, and um, first kiss. kiss. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Jeremy Eat World. Oh, Jeremy asked another question I missed earlier. Sorry. He's asked if you had, if, uh, he's thinking about moving to Cookville. Does Hillary have any single friends? Uh, I don't know. No. Do you do matchmaking, Rich? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, no, I don't. I gave up on that. Uh, putting this towards the first annual wrestling with Rich Camp. Can it just be wrestling with, uh, Darren? Darren's, a. Uh... Darren's the wrestler in the, well, all my cousins in Michigan are wrestlers. You just, anytime we'd get into a scrum, you just try to stay off the ground as long as you can. Cause as soon as it went to the floor, you were done for. I was a Would, baseball guy, you know? D really? He's good at it. Oh yeah. Darren was really good. And that his must brother was really good too. Yeah. It really pissed me off. Uh, $2 for the occupational games. Uh, thank you. Yes. Yes. Chetra. Yes. Uh, Matthew Burns, a dollar. I think he got a, I think he got a free question. And so he's trying to back pay. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. <clears throat> uh, what does this mean? Is that it's a shoe? Froning X3. Uh, yeah, supposedly it's. I'm supposed to have have it on my feet here soon. It'll be more like the X1, which I obviously I, there was a comment about it in the video the other day. I really like the X1, and that's the shoe that I wear. And they're almost talking at this point. Like the toes are about to fall off. Um, that guy Jeremy World sent me a picture the other day of a shoe he bought. I think it was the Froning shoe, and it has a white strap over it. That's the old school one. Yeah. Oh, he said he uh, loves it. He says it's crazy wide. Yeah, it is wide. Th there was a shoe they made you, the first Froning shoe, that was so narrow on the top. Do you the remember compete, that? It was the Compete, I think. Compete 614. It was yeah, a it was beautiful a shoe, but fuck, I couldn't get the tongue down and tie. It was, it was the first time I ever wore a shoe where my foot was too thick going up and down. Yeah. Uh, that might have been the 
the just plain Froning. That was like a standalone shoe. They've yeah, it looked like the Nano right 2 kind of, but it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know which one you're talking about. That one was pretty comfortable, though. Bam, I'm here. Bam, Rosie. You do any? Do you do any toe spacers? I don't do. To, I should do some toe spacers. My uh, big toe is starting to creep in on my middle toe there on both sides a little bit. Not bad, but um, I just, you know how it is with kids. The things that you should do sometimes just fall by the wayside because you get so concentrated on what they're doing. Could you take a toe sponsor, uh, a toe spacer sponsorship, or do you have any conflicting sponsors? I don't think I have any conflicting sponsors. Okay, so you're open to that. I'm open to toe space. I'm open to toe open in my toes. <laughs> yeah. They need more people. When I think of toe spacers, I just think of Danielle Brandon. Yeah, I, I've tried. I had like bought those ones off Amazon that look like big, weird thing. But I've seen like, more like brass those. knuckles. Yeah, they really do. But they're like blue gel. And then I think my dog got a hold of them. So Bill. my my um my son had hammer toe. You know what that is? Oh yeah. You're born with one of your toes on top of your other toe. Yeah. Did and they do walk- anything for it or? No, but we put toe spacers on them. And then, of course, my kids are always barefoot. Yeah, mine too. And, th- and then I just forgot about it. And now his toes are just like completely open. But we did. I would put toe spacers on them probably. I don't know. I, I want to say I did it every night, but it was probably more like once a week for yeah. like a year until you're right. Until, you, until I lost them. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're gone. Trice has a weird one of his middle toes. Yeah. He has like a double nail bed. So his toenail is like two toenails off of one. It's the weirdest thing. And he oh, off not, of one toe. Yeah, he will not let you clip that sucker either. He freaks out. Hey, um, uh, I have I have a friend whose toes are webbed, and then one of her kids' toes is webbed. And I, I don't have a double nail bed, but I do have one toe that grows two nails. Really? Yeah, okay. It's a trip. You, you and Trice are the same. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, and they're not like, I don't know. They're just, they're weird. I'm not familiar with this, but uh, John George says uh, he once dated a girl with a camel toe. I have no idea. I don't know if toe spacers can fix that. I don't think so. I think they got the pants up too high, but it is what it is. Uh, Vittorio, Vittorio. Uh, What's a good – man, look at this. What is the population – before we get to this, what do we know what the population increase is in Cookville? Um, I don't know about increase, but we got a couple. You think it's increased in the last uh, 15 years? I'd say it's greatly increased in the last 15 years. I wonder it's someone someone uh, google that and find that out. I wonder do you can you say what you think your um influence on that growth has been? Uh no, not really. You know, it, there has been a lot of growth in Cookville just because of where it is geographically to Knoxville and Nashville too. So, um I mean, we get a ton of drop-ins and we get a ton of traffic through here for sure. I know for sure we've um, affected the the travel to cross or to Cookville, um, so. But <laughs> Vittorio, there's I mean there's a bunch of good neighborhoods around here. Um, there's a bunch of cool towns re- really close. Um, there's not really that no bad area. Uh, what he says, uh, Vittorio says, what's a good neighborhood to buy a house in? Being around a Christian based CrossFit gym sounds like a good place to start. God bless you in your mission. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, we got a good group of people here. We've got a great community, uh, super supportive community. And, uh, man, it's, it's fun, fun to see it grow. You know, when we first came into this facility, it was, it was big, but it wasn't, um, it, I didn't think we'd ever fill it. And then you come in here on a, on a week night and you've got one type of a kid's class. We've got our life class. We've got a regular class. It's, it's packed and hopping in here. So yeah, the, the, population of cookville may say thirty five thousand. that's if you've been here so long so you know like the town itself in the city limits there's probably that's correct but there's so many people just outside or there's two or three towns that everything feeds into cookville so i think they say during like working hours there's around a hundred thousand people and then when you get the university there's another ten thousand and so i was gonna say the university's gotta have ten thousand ten, around ten thousand yeah and thousands so, of employees right yeah like so it's it's grown definitely um, and like I said, that number is a little bit di- different too. So there you go. 33. How can you see this rich? If you're on a phone, I don't you know. got good it eyes popping up every time you post it on there. So I know, yeah. but isn't the screen small? You have good eyes. I've got pretty decent eyes. I had uh, LASIK in 2012, 11. Um, Cookville has grown 33.1% since, uh, the, uh, since Man, 2000. Robbie. 
Tennessee is growing somewhat quickly. It is growing faster than 69% of similarly sized cities since 2000. Thank you. You're, you're going to the Isle of Man, Rich? It's the Isle of Man. Oh. Oh, oh. you're going to the Isle of Man. No, I'm not. I mean, I would go. I want to go there. Is that the – there's a bike race on that, right? Yeah, it's like like one of the most dangerous bike Crazy, races in right? the world. Yeah, yeah, they close the island and the dudes just launch on motorcycles. Launch. Yeah, I love the documentary <laughs> on it. It's crazy. Crazy. I, w- I, I, actually, I actually am interested in going and watching that. I, I – that I like I like um, fast shit like that. Yeah, I do too, man. That lemons race that we do is awesome. What's that? It's where you get an old crappy car and you have to outfit it with all the safety necessary safety stuff, and then you go to a racetrack. If there's this whole series, or you know, anybody can do it as long as you get enough. It's it's basically a poor man's way to do a track day and get on the track with a bunch of other cars. And man, we've done a couple YouTube videos on it, but it is awesome. So do we you have drive a, it. Oh yeah, we have a '94 BMW 325i. What would I and, Google? Uh, 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 24 hours of lemons. Our on our YouTube channel, it's that's the the video title is 24 hour of lemons. But it's man, you talk about it's probably one of the most fun things that I've done without the pain of CrossFit. You know, like physical pain. It's so much fun. You're in like a fire suit, a Hans device. It's a full on. You're, you're racing. There's 120 cars on the track. So this is just a month ago. Yeah. Yep. Is this dangerous? I mean, isn't everything somewhat dangerous? Check uh, the car for looks the like rules. Hugh for a That's store a, for 50 cents oh, on half there? price day. Well, I can buy beef for five dollars. <laughs> yeah. So you have to wear a fire suit and everything. Like, last year, like one. There's a couple in car. A couple in car. Yeah, hey, in there too. Nope, some fitness. Yeah. Gotta have some fitness. Are there any uh, shots of the cars awesome. going around the track? So he, he definitely. Yeah, uh, if you. There'll be some like. Front to back. It's a front to back. It's a tough. Sets on half price. Look at it, it's me. It's you. That guy carries around two Buckeyes and says, You want to see my nuts? <laughs> really? That's his he's deal. He's from Ohio. He's, come, he's from Ohio. Yeah. Good dude. But yeah. Uh, did so, you guys. Did you ever. How many laps did you do? So what we do is every fuel stop, you would change drivers. And so I ran three hours on three hours straight on Saturday and then two, two hour, two and a half hour stints on Sunday. Oval track? uh, No, it's a Barber Motorsports Park in Birmingham, Alabama. They have them all over the world. I mean, there's a ton out in California. Um, But yeah, you basically you're you're put into classes A, B, and C, depending on how crappy your car is. You're supposed to be able to, if they offered you a certain, like, I forgot what the money dollar amount is that they could buy your car and then you can make any necessary safety improvements. So you put a cage in it, you put a fire suppression system in it and then wheels and tires. And then they put you in a class A, B, and C. So we were in the A class. And then if you have a really nice car, like some of these guys will put some money into some cars, they'll dock you laps. And then from eight to five, you run as many laps as you can. And then the next, they stop it. And then on Sunday from eight to five, you run as many laps as you can. We finished, I think, 16th. Uh, we had a couple incidents where we got ran into and then I uh, had to serve some. If you bump or touch or hit anybody, you have to go into the pits and basically they ridicule you as well. So uh, try to keep the ego out of it and let you race a little bit, but not be stupid because you get some guys out there that it's like any any competition. You get some idiots out there. But man, it's, mean, it's so much fun. Someone bumped you? Yeah, so I was I was setting up for a corner and somebody just dive bombed me and uh, drove right into my left rear quarter panel. Didn't really do anything. It, it took off the bumper cover and they, they had me come in and um, he's like, uh, we saw that he actually hit you and he just wanted to make sure I didn't have a concussion, but I didn't. It didn't hurt me at whatsoever. So, do you but ever man, talk it's... to the guy afterwards? The guy who hit you? Uh, no, actually, um, no, I didn't. <laughs> it's just one of those racing things. Yeah, what a trip. And you think Man, he knew what fun. he was doing? Uh, Maybe, yeah. Maybe he's just trying to get a, a – I don't know. You come in that hot on that corner like it was turn one, and you're you're about 100 miles an hour, and you're setting up to take a hard left and then a quick right. And so, you know, you've got you to set up on the corner, and he was not set up on the corner and just drove it in there too deep. So so do you say, um, hey, Hillary, um, I'd like to uh, spend some money fixing up a car and race it on the track? 
so what we did was Lane, so Lane, the guy that you said looked like Hugh Hefner, he drove our um, hill climb car that we sponsored, the um, Pikes Peak Hill Climb. We sponsored his car with Mayhem. And so it's kind of a, a return. He had this car and was like, hey, come drive with me. And, and then uh, that was last year. And then this year we just kind of like paid to help fix it up and then paid our entry fee. So the car was already bought basically. And we just bought into the car, but it's, it's worth it. It's so much fun. Kids so that's, it the, too. that's the, that's the spiel you give her. Yeah. Yeah. I just always, does she to talk to you about the I danger? My like, mental health, you know? Oh, right. Oh is it, yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> my mental yeah. health's important. Oh, and, and then um, is she worried about your safety? Will she be like, uh, hey, 100%. Rich, I yeah. If she actually, I don't think she understands kind of what we do a lot of the time. Um, I think it, she kind of just like blocks it out a little bit, like doesn't for her mental it. health. Yeah, I think it's for her mental health. She kind of blocks out what we do. I don't know if I'd be able to talk. I, I get away with a lot of shit. I don't know if I'd be able to rate. Uh. Uh, Rich, are you? you gotta, it's fun. It's <laughs> awesome. Rich, are you excited uh, for Elevation Worship's new album as I am? We just had Elevation out here last week. I actually didn't know about it. Ele they came out to support uh, the Atlas Free event, Mayhem for Freedom event we did. And they're, man, they're Is a that a band, partner. Elevation Worship? It's a church in uh, based out of North Carolina, and their worship uh, band does some albums. And uh, But they've, man, they've supported a ton, and they matched um, any money that we raise for a lot of our causes with Mayhem Mission. And so a uh, really cool partner and, and want to support them. So, looking, yeah, looking forward to that. For sure. Why do you think um people? How does that work? Why do those people want to affiliate with you? They see you're a good ambassador for Christianity, or what? Why? What, what happens? Rory uh, calls those people and says, "Hey, we're having an event. You guys want to partake?" I mean, what's in uh, it for them? We that relationship we've we've um we've had for the past four or five years. Brian had a connection there. They actually they I think they heard us listening to their music in one of our YouTube videos, and just kind of struck up a. Uh, a relationship and that they're about supporting, you know, people and, and partnering with good groups. And that's what we're about um, with mayhem mission as well. And so I think it's just helping people. That's, that's kind of with, um, with mayhem, with what they do serve is a big part of, of what we want to do here and um, feel like we've been given the things that we've been given and we want to give back in some way. What and what was the event? Tell me what the event was and what it was. What, uh, um... So it's mayhem for mayhem for freedom, and so we work with Atlas Free, formerly uh, Rescue Freedom, and they go in and rescue people that are human trafficked, and then um, help them kind of rehabilitate. There's some rehabilitation houses, and um, so yeah, we support them and and kind of come like with Mayhem Mission. What we try to do, like sex of, trafficking, you're talking about brain, yeah, is that yeah, human specifically that, yep. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all all forms of human trafficking, but yeah, sex trafficking is, is the, that's probably the, the biggest one. So, um, but yeah, Atlas freedom, they do a, a bunch of cool stuff. Jeremy runs that. And, uh, yeah, so we just want to, we got another uh, event coming up with never thirst, uh, where it's, they drill wells in areas that are, you know, kind of lacking in water. And, and so it's, it's pretty cool to, to come along and, and, be a part of it. Do you do you follow or, or do you follow um, politics very much? Did you follow what happened in the Virgin Islands with J.P. Morgan and Joe Biden a few months ago? Uh, I follow politics, um, but I did not see that one. So basically, the reason why it popped on my radar today is you know about this guy Jeffrey Epstein, right? Oh yeah. Yep. And he he had some island and he's being accused of all sorts of trafficking and and then they caught him and they put him in jail and then he hung himself. Right. That's the story. And Allegedly. then they got and then they got his um his partner that Giselle Maxwell girl. They have her they tried her as being like an accomplice. I think she was like I think she somehow like if you, I watched, started watching the Netflix thing and I couldn't fucking handle it. I made it. Yeah, it's like a thirteen part that, series. I made it through twenty stuff. minutes. Yeah, it's dark, very yeah. dark. Unfortunately, it's too dark for me. And um, so basically, so she's in jail. And supposedly, there's this list of people and that you she know, has. The, yeah, and he was a very wealthy guy. And people, and there's this list of people who are on his jet and who went to his island. And there's all these people like who want to condemn those people who went to the island. And it's like I'm sure we've all hung out with people who've done some really horrific shit and we didn't know it. Mm -hmm. So like, it's not, an, for me, it's not enough. 
guilty by association. Yeah, like yeah. like if someone said to me, "Hey, do you want to go on my jet to my island?" I'd be like, "Yeah, let's go." Yeah. I so so maybe I'm just naive. I'm, I'm fine with that. But then this weird thing happens where um the the attorney general of the Virgin Islands a few months ago mm -hmm. opened up a case against uh opened up a case, a case against JP Morgan and said, "Hey, we're going to do an investigation on you guys for child sex trafficking and, mm -hmm. and Jeffrey Epstein. Well, yeah. Four days later, Joe Biden flew down there. This is, this isn't like conspiracy shit. This is like, right. You can just, right. you can just go like New York times, Washington Post. All, you can right. go to all the lib mags and, and see this. He flew down there for vacation, but he did meet mm -hmm. with the governor of, of one of the areas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he said, um, or of the Virgin islands. And four days later, that attorney general was fired. The one who opened up the case against J.P. Morgan for the child sex trafficking with Jeffrey Epstein. Well, yesterday, this guy, his name is Jay Salesley, Jess Salesley, J-E-S-S-A-Y-L-E-Y -S -S -E -E or something like that. I, I was just reading the article. Once again, and, and I always try to use liberal sources. Right, so right. No I try one, to look so at both sides. No one can I try to look like at both sides. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And this fucking his 1200 fucking this uh, president of J.P. Morgan had 1200 emails with Epstein and with uh, pictures of uh, little uh, little kids in there and them talking about sex, having sex with those kids. And I'm thinking, and our president went over there and coincidentally. Four days later, the attorney general who was looking into that bank uh, for uh, you know, sex trafficking was fired. It's just it's it's just too much. Is J.P. Morgan in Manhattan or no? Yeah, they're just they're one of the largest banks in the world. You didn't get my reference there, did you? Man, uh, no, Manhattan, man. Uh, no, no, somebody else got indicted in Manhattan. Oh right? yes, yes, right, right, right. Well, that that's the th that's the crazy thing. So this guy legally gave money to some girl he had sex with, and it's legal, and said, "Hey, don't talk about it." But he filed it wrong on his taxes, so they're going and after so him. So the whole everything this. Both sides are just so – it's ridiculous. It's you know, ridiculous. Like I'm reading a book on – I'm reading uh, George Washington's biography by Ron Chernow. Uh -huh. You recommend it? Oh, yeah. It's great. I mean it's it's really cool and just – it's dense. It's like 925 pages. Who's the, who's the author again? Ron Chernow. He wrote uh, one on Washington and he wrote another one on Ulysses S. Grant. So I have this kind of – I have a, a goal to read a biography on every U.S. president. I read uh, Bill O'Reilly's killing books, all of his killing books. And so I got really into that for some reason after reading Killing Kennedy, Killing Reagan. So I've read Reagan's. I'm on Washington's now. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go straight through or, or skip around. But um, and after reading this, this one is it's pretty good. It's uh, I mean, it's very. It's it's. Like I said, it's dense. It goes into every and everything, any and everything about George Washington um, you could possibly think about because he was super calculated and wrote out everything. So it goes through all of his journals. And um, I'm at the point now where I'm like 88 percent through it, where he's um, the first president and how much, you know, he just he didn't want to do it and then did it and then wanted didn't want to do a second term. And then basically he was the perfect man for the job at the time. So it's just crazy to did, look at the time then versus now and you know it's just did they bizarre. try to make him a dictator did they try to offer him a, a kingship over the united states and he turned it down there's some just kind of one of the main things they said was you know he was perfect for it because he had one of the main reasons people pushed him so much is they didn't want a monarch was because he didn't have any biological heirs um so he had a bunch of his he adopted his wife's kids he adopted his wife's kids kids his nephew's kids a couple like he had a lot of death in the family and he would always was always super generous with his um with his family and uh, you know everybody has their he doesn't have and, any kids george washington never got a girl pregnant no, no biological kids so they don't know if it was wow. his wife or him um but yeah so it's i mean it, there's no idea not that he was perfect but it's it's cool to kind of look back and see and uh i mean he definitely screwed some stuff up and they talked about you know how Tack, like how militarily he probably wasn't the, the brightest because he was a little slow with his maneuvers and tactics, but he was brilliant in tricking the British into thinking we had more men or keeping men on or 
you know, at one point, I think we had less than 700 rounds and no, no barrels of uh, gunpowder and to trick the British into not attack. Like it's, it's pretty masterful what he did, but then as a president and managing people, um, he did a pretty good job. There was a lot of things he did not do well would be slavery, but um, it was, it was a, it's a good read. If you want to, if you like history, I like history. I'm a history guy. So well, um, when do you read? Uh, well, sorry, audio. I, I'm audio booking it. I have to go at one point. So I'm, I've learned I can't do at one speed. It has to be 1.5 or 1.75 because my brain, I have to be trying to keep up to hang on to the words. If I start getting ahead of it, my brain wanders somewhere else. So I listen at 1.75. When I'm doing farm work or the kids aren't around or uh, doing a bunch of, you know, biking stuff, I'll just listen to it. And so, like I said, I'm about 88% through it. So, so there was uh, footage of you um, working on the uh, electric fence. So that would be a time when you'd be listening to it. That would be a time when I'd be listening to it. Yep. If nobody's around, if I'm by myself, um, for sure. And, and and will you put your phone like on um, no cellular data or something like that, so no one could call you and bug you? No, 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 no. I'll just I'll keep it on because usually, like I said, there's kids and got to be on top of whatever's going on. Uh, would love to see Rich speak to boys. 16 to 25 uh, on dating as a young man, marriage, health, going into older age. I know I'm curious what Rich is going to say. How old are you, Rich? 35, almost 36. Do you have any gray hairs? I'm bald in the back. Everybody knows that. Everybody wants to tell me about that on the internet. But, but do you have any gray hair? I think I got some random ones coming in my beard sometimes. I usually try to yank those out if I see them, though. I don't know if you're bald can, and gray. Can you imagine making a post on the internet? Um, excuse me, sir. Uh, I see that you're losing hair on the top of your head. <laughs> You'd be surprised. It happens all the time. Um, thank you. I appreciate that for letting me know. Someone has to. God, think yep. about picking up your keyboard and your fingers. Hey, for good that. workout, but you're losing the back, the hair on the back of your head. Thanks. Listen, man. people, that those fingertips that you touch your wife's vagina with, that you touch your own <laughs> penis with, that you feed yourself with, why are you letting them type dumb shit on the keyboard? Man, that's, these are that's awesome. These are amazing. Don't let them... You fondle boobs with these. Don't let them do dumb things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's great. I, it doesn't bother me anymore. I'm like, yeah, I know. And they're like, just shave your head. I'm like, I don't want to shave my head. No, your hair looks good. To. Don't shave it. Don't In due to. time. I don't you look want great. To. Yeah, thanks, yeah. man. I appreciate that. You look, you look, You look great. Um, I, um, I, I am curious what it is going to be like for you though, to, it is going to be fun to hear you talk about getting older and slowing down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, I've, I've do you think you're going to enjoy it? Man, it's yes and no. You know, it, it is frustrating on days where I'm like, man, I should like, so take this weekend, for instance, we did quarterfinals, uh, Friday night, I did event two A and B. So it was all those box jumps um a thousand shuttle runs so my calves were lit up the lunges on s saturday afternoon so glutes were a little fired up so i was pretty sore leg calves and um glutes and then hitting all those thrusters my knee was a little hey bro you haven't hit that depth with that weight in a long time so it was a little angry and then uh that afternoon we played some flag football <laughs> and so uh yesterday and today uh, I'm definitely feeling my age, but I, you know, I don't want to stop doing those things because I know at some point I won't be able to do those things. So everybody's like, why are you, what are you doing going to play flag football? But if I can, I still want to. And then, like I said, I'm coaching Trice's baseball team. So I'll get out there in the yard with him and still have to show him I'm, I'm the more dominant male in our family. And so I got to show him, uh, who's boss every once in a while. So yeah, my, yeah, my I mean, kids, how old is he? He's, uh, he'll be six in like two, three weeks. Has he told you that he's better at you at some stuff yet? No, my kid knows. Oh. Who's, he knows who's the boss. Yeah, my kids try to tell me stuff that they're better at me then, and then I have to like find some. I have to like find some way to mush them, mash them. Yeah, down. for sure. You gotta like you can't oh. let them get. That's keep them humble, right? Right. And, and, People and, call and, it bullying. I call it parenting. They they need that boundary. For sure. You they need know. that boundary. Yep. I, I, so I was actually thinking, you know, I started CrossFit when I was 34 and I wasn't athletic like you at all, but I pushed as hard as I could. And then around, I don't know what year it was between 39 and let's say 44, I was injured a lot, bad injuries, 
all the lower back injuries where, you know, like I, I stuck in bed or I had to crawl right. and pee in the shower, shit like that. But and man. I actually told my wife today, I said, holy shit, I haven't hurt my back in five years. And don't it's because say, I don't say that, man. It's because it's because I it just up. took I took the gas way off the pedal. Right. Not in terms of frequency, but just in terms of sh just shit to do. You know what I mean? Yep. Like yep. Th this isn't going to uh, what 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 is some of the dumbest things like? When you were younger, would you, what would be some of the dumbest things you would do? Like, could you ever just go in and like do a, a warm up with a set of ten with three hundred pounds deadlifts? Yeah, I mean, all kind of that. Uh, we were notorious on no warm up whatsoever. Now I can't even think about not hitting some type of machine uh, before I bend down to pick up my keys. You know, like right? I'm okay, just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, but yeah, the, no warm. But up it is like that. It is, you're a machine guy to warm. You want to see a bead of sweat before you pick yeah, a forty five well, pound plate you know, off like, the we'll hit some intervals and I'll be like, all right, first round is going to be a warm up, you know, like that might be my warm up. But yeah, I've definitely got to, I got to get some blood flowing, get the heart rate up and, uh, and, and definitely get some, get some juices flowing before I'm going to try to lift anything heavy these days. Um, and you know, uh, a heavy for a day might not look like, you know, like I said, I hit uh 353 this weekend on clean and I have not hit that in two years. I haven't hit anything over 325 in a long, long, long time. So, um, you know, if it's there, strike while the iron's hot. And then there's days where it's, you know, hey, that's that's not what I need to be doing. Or, you know, I'm to the point, too, where it's I'm trying to have a lot of fun doing fitness as well. So, like, I do a lot less of the things that I need to be doing to get better and more things that, hey, I'm going to count that because I did something today. I, I yeah i don't want to jinx you i'll, I'll save it for the next no time. hey i mean i've been there are, you know okay well are you gonna do you think it's gonna take a something um big injury to, to stop you yeah are you gonna go to like a wheel falls off yeah oh like, yeah oh. i'm going to the wheels fall off i want to use it when, <laughs> I, when i talk to god i want him to be like wow you use that you use your body up you know i don't want anything like, I, I always joke so thomas lynn i don't know you probably met thomas he went to the games years ago uh, as a master's six fifties, fifties master. I think he's in his sixties now. And we always joke that he's ghost of my CrossFit future, you know, like oh. the, the Christmas Carol, cause he just had double knee replacement. Now he's like walking around, like he's in here every day though. Him and his wife, his wife is a coach for us. She double, teaches our what is that double knee replacement? Meaning his kneecaps are not his kneecaps. They're like fake. It's, it's artificial. It's not his kneecaps. It's basically both ends of his bones are not his knees. And he's How now do they he, do that. They cut off the end of your bone and put hack on them off and then drive something into there. And it's apparently it's all God. That sounds risky. It sounds God. so bad, but apparently God, that sounds risky ever. Yeah. So, but dude, Thomas is in here now and he's like, he used to kind of just kind of somber around a lot. What I think I look like when I walk. Um, but he now is just like, you know, walks around like it's nothing. And he said, it was great. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, like my knock on wood, overall health, shoulders coming back. Um, I can do some stuff now without, with very minimal pain and I'm, I'm sleeping well with that shoulder, but the knee every once in a while, this left knee where I had that meniscus taken out pieces of it taken out that it just, uh, it never kind of came back to what it was before that. So I've just got to be smart on those days. Uh, Jeremy is uh, Eat World is still waiting for his reparations. There you go, wait. George Washington. Um, <laughs> Rich, you said in, in this video that I watched. Um, uh, first, let me say this, uh, Audrey. Listen, uh, I love hearing about other shit that interests Rich besides CrossFit. Yeah, but listen to this question. This is a CrossFit <laughs> question. You're gonna love this one. Let, let me see if I can sway you. Here we go. Stand by. You said that uh, you have snatched 300 pounds three times in your life. Three three hundred pounds or more. Yep, sounds right. Uh, in a recent video, um, how, how many attempts have you made at three hundred pounds? Have you only made three attempts? Probably six or seven attempts. So Maybe. not a lot. Not it's even. Been a, it's been a while. I snatched the first time I snatched three hundred was it in like two thousand. 13 maybe 10 years ago and then i think i hit it at the invitational one of the invitationals i almost hit it at a regional one time and missed it so that's one attempt i know i missed and then i hit it in the liftoff which was like 306 and then i've not even tried to get anything close to that. i hit 275 last year at the uh, semifinals and felt like i could have that was a good day for me so um yeah those days are few and far between for me i've been i think the question that he started with was you think you'll ever pr again and i said not on a lift 
Um, I'm just not at that point in my life anymore that I really care about that. Um, right. You know, well, that, hey, wanna, that's a good sign. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think a so. real, I want to. I mean, I a few like years ago, to... you kind of have stopped even going to the pain cave. I mean, I, still, I had yeah, Haley, that, I had Haley on a couple of years ago, and she's like, "You don't even know, Rich. Rich doesn't go to the dark place, and he's still so fit." And then I had you on. Is that true? And you're like, "Yeah, that's true." I don't. I'm a big softie when it comes to that. I, I'm like the event four, t- fifteen five, the row thruster. I just, I did not. I remember that workout, and I said I'd never do it again. And then of course it showed up. And I just could not get my mind right to do it. So I procrastinated that for a good 45 minutes when I was warmed up probably an hour before that. So, yeah, I just, the older I get, the less, you know, you kind of wish you had that oblivious to the, how bad things are going to hurt. Like when you first started CrossFit, cause you could go to those places and now it's almost like a detriment that, you know, how bad it's going to hurt. So, yeah. Uh, Manny C. Serrano, uh, my wife was planning to surprise me and send me to training with Rich. Uh, you just said uh, your 20, 28th camp, right? Yep, 28. How often do you do those? Usually every quarter, every couple months. Josh wants to do more, and it's it's fun. But it Who's Josh? Uh, Josh Malone that runs Mayhem here. Okay. Uh, he's our COO too. But um, it, it's just emotionally taxing. Like I love it, love meeting new people. But by the time I'm done with it, because I'm – you know, I, I would not say I'm an introvert, but I'm not an extrovert either. And so you want to make sure when people are paying to come hang out that they, they're they getting something and getting a good product. And so you're trying to be on at all times. And so by the end of that weekend, I'm just shot. We had a really good group this last time. We've had good groups every time, but this last time was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, we just get some fitness in and, and hang out. And, um, and, you know, we've got an incredible community and people that support us. So um we have a ton of fun so yeah we do them every we do probably four or five a year where do people sign up uh mayhemnation.com and i think there's a train with rich tab i think in june we have our next one it may be sold out though and how many we do 30 we do 30 if we could house more um logistically but um you don't want to water down the product and i want to have some type of connect try to get some type of connection with each person if you get too many than 30 then it's just not going to happen what do you mean um how how's like at the gym, having, you know, enough equipment and enough space oh. for probably 50, but you don't want to, I don't want to, don't want the water down the product basically. It's in its three days. Yeah. Friday night, people come in, hang out, work out, usually do a workout or two, maybe it depends on the group and what we're doing. And then Saturday, uh, kind of all day and, um, Sage Bergener will come in sometimes and do some lifting stuff. Sometimes Henshaw has come and and taken them through aerobic stuff. And then we've got Pamela who runs our mayhem gymnastics stuff. She'll come in and do a little like tutorial, some gymnastic stuff. We'll hit a bunch of different workouts um, depending on what we've done. And then Sunday uh, we have a barbecue. One of the members here, he's like a pit master. So he'll uh, smoke some brisket and we'll have a little food bar. And then Sunday come in, have a little devotional, and uh, work out a couple times and send them on their way around noon, one o'clock. So it's kind of three day, two, three days. A- age age range? All over. We've had, uh, I think we cap it at 18, but then at, on the young side. And then I think we had a 73 year old one of the times. And she just, hey, and you know, at the beginning, we we're like, hey, here to have fun. Um, we're going to tell you kind of the RX and then come to us if you have any ailments, any scaling leave the ego at the door. It's more about, Hey, let's have some fun. We'll talk about why we do some of the stuff that we do and why we do it a little bit different at times. And, um, it is a ton of fun. Ever, ever had three generations there ever had like a, 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 a son, a dad and a grandpa or a, a you know, a daughter, a dad. We've and a had, grandma? we've had two generations. I don't think we've had three. I could be wrong, but I know we've had two. I, I really like the way you said that too. Um, you're trying to uh, connect. You you want to connect with everyone there. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you could. Like I said, we could do fifty, but I don't feel like you might not um, talk to someone. Yeah, yeah. You it's, might not know it's hard Do you normally really sure know everyone's name by the time the weekend? By the over? time we get to the end, you get you get a read on definitely um, most of them. You know, there's some that are still a little bit more reserved, and you're almost like, dang, I feel bad. At, you know, but they, you know, you talk to them at the end because we take pictures and do all that stuff, and you're like there are a couple every once in a while like dang it i never really connected connected with them but luckily we have a bunch of athletes that you know they're kind of circulating around and um are part of the the weekend too and so um you know i hope everybody has a a positive experience coming out of it 
What would you say to someone um, who's going to come to that? What advice would you give them? Hey, don't be shy. You came here to see me. Come yeah, say absolutely. hi. Heck come yeah. shake yeah. my and hand. Like, let's do it. Absolutely. And that's one of the things we do a couple Q and A's. And so probably two, one hour Q and A's. And I'm like, anything's on the table. We've talked any and everything. We've talked family. We've talked faith. We've talked uh, the state of CrossFit. We've talked um, nutrition, all of it. So that's why I tell people, I'm like, Hey, nothing's off the table. Let's talk about it. So it's like I said, it's pretty cool. Uh, people ever cry at this thing? Oh, we've had a couple. We, uh, one of our guys that's been to a bunch of them, Travis, him, he got married here. Him and his wife, Nick, married here. At, at, a, at a Rich's training camp? Must be a good text he's reading. Potential spam, jerks. Hey, um, was it um, a... Um... He got he he comes to a, a train with Rich event and then he got he came to one with his wife and got married. Story goes fiance. he he was um, a recovering addict and he kind of came out of one of his his episodes and saw the games on ESPN and started following us started coming to train with Rich and just fell in love with it. Good good solid dude, um, good friend of ours now. And then asked if he could do the wedding at Mayhem and we were like we've never done one but absolutely let's go. So. Um, yeah, so we've got some pretty cool stories like that. Uh, Anthony, TPA, Ooh. what up, Rich? You any good at pickleball? It's good on the joints, old man. Keep killing it. I know, like it's it's just that left cut. You know, I was watching. I actually watched on ESPN. They had it with like Andy Roddick, uh, Andre Agassi, John McEnroe, and so it was fun to watch. I, I would like to get into more pickleball. I'm actually. Um, we talked about putting some painting some courts in the parking lot. Um, I've, oh, here we go. David Attaway. Uh -oh. uh, I've tried to sign up for training with rich for two years now. Train with rich, but keep missing it later this year. Hopefully it sounds like it's already sold out for June. Is that true? I know yeah, Josh, Josh is probably like, Hey asshole. It's not sold out. Don't say that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Josh, Josh handles all that. We've got a waiting. We've had a waiting list a couple of times or we'll have people added to a list that they get first, um, uh, right. If they keep missing or something like that. So email Josh. He's on. That. Um, John Mick, Mick, you you read you read what's what's the fuck McMoyle is that name? McMoyle Mick okay. Mick McLemoyle Mick McLemoyle. Okay, good. Um, Mick Lamoyle? Yeah. So Richard, um, wait, 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 wait! Don't sorry, take sorry. my job. Uh, Rich, okay. are you going to read Alexander Hamilton's biography? I highly recommend it. Yeah, first U.S. Treasury, um, and then his presidents. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the point right now in in Washington's. Um, biography that him and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison have a little falling out. I'm actually going to read the Federalist Papers next is on my reading list uh, where they break down the Constitution into, uh, you know, what they what they intended. And so um, I what just, book, I, what's that book called? Is it called the Federalist Papers it's called the Federalist Papers? Yeah. So basically they were trying Text to me when it. you're going to read that. I'm going to read that with you and okay. we're going to come on and do a, and, and talk about it. I'm down. I'm down. I, yeah, yeah. I want to be more versed in that stuff. I went to Boy State when I was in uh, high school and I was really into government and actually thought about going to school for poli sci and then got into the fire department and really didn't want to do school anymore. So I switched to exercise science, but the, um, Hey dude, I, we'll leverage, let's both read that and we'll leverage right. your popularity to get some like professor from some fucking, I'm in. from I'm like in. Hillsdale I, college to come be like in school us on that shit. I'm all for it. You know, I, I want to be more versed on you. We're talking politics. Like I want to, I want to actually know and have a real opinion on some of this stuff. Cause it is, we're getting kind of crazy and everything else, so I, but I want to have facts to back it up. Not just, you know, reading. What, what, what do you think about like, um, honesty you know jimmy carter one time said i remember when i was a little kid when he was president but he said something like he's guilty of lust he was a one of our you know he's the president of the united states and he said he was guilty for lusting after um other women besides his wife and like he admitted that i guess he was like a really religious man yeah very christian guy um which is interesting right because he's a democrat and now they've it's it's like almost like they've they, i don't know any i don't know any democrats who have like strong values like that anymore i mean joe biden's a catholic if you read the internet yeah i guess you're right i yeah i don't and know they're not supposed know. to be into like abortion and and, and like tr mutilating ch they're not supposed to be doing here's bad shit like the, that here's the deal is we're all human and we're all fallible and you right know, you, you got to be able to stand on what you believe and um 
and admit your you know, faults, right? Just be honest. Yeah, okay, and, I did smoke I, weed in the third grade, and I did exactly. look through the, the crack in the bathroom stall and saw the girls change. I'm guilty. You know, we talk religion I call faith. You know, like I, that's, that's why I believe in Jesus and why I need Jesus. Cause I know I screw up. I'm, I'm not perfect. And I do a bunch of stupid stuff and I do it on the regular. And, um, you know, that's, but you gotta be able to, you know, it might be different when you're in it and you're like, Oh no, no, I'm fine. But then you're going to come to terms with it eventually and be like, yeah, I screwed up. And so if you can admit that, you know, and it's, it's not an easy thing to do that. Um, and I think it comes with wisdom, comes with age. And um, you realize some of those things when you're younger that you think are way more important aren't necessarily that important. You know, we're at a point, both of us, that it's like, hey, what we thought maybe when we were younger, that's what we needed to be doing. And then now, I mean, kids have put me in such perspective of life and um, everything about just who they are and what they are and how, like, it's scary how moldable kids are and you don't want to like, you know, it's, it's tough. Like being a parent's the hardest thing ever. And so I want to have as much, I want to try to answer those questions for them from my perspective and tell them, Hey, like my parents did, my parents were very, and, and that's more my leadership style of like, Hey, I've, I'm going to get there, get in there and do it with you. And I'm going to do the hard work with you. I'm never going to ask you to do something that I didn't do, but then I'm also going to be real with you of like, Hey, you can do this, but this is what it did for me or did to me or did to my life. And so, um, you know, it's, it's crazy what kids are subject to now, what versus what we were subject to when we were younger. It, it's, it's hard and it's heavy to think about. I, I want to be, um, <clears throat> I, going back to what you were saying about being fallible, fallible. I, I think one of the biggest problems we have in society is that we don't accept people, um, when they say, sorry, yeah. And, and I and I use the word accept instead of the word forgive because I forgive. I feel like you're still kind of holding on to it a little bit, but accept. So like we're in these we're in these weird positions now where we and, and because we don't accept people for their um, shortcomings, people want to lie. Right. Mm -hmm. So like you have Nicholas Joyal and, he, you know, he got caught for doing steroids a couple of years ago and he just came out and was honest about it. And like yeah. I'd like to see just a group of I would like to see the vast majority of people say, hey. Thanks for being honest. Yeah. We, we yeah, accept, I mean, we accept you. And instead it's like, and, it and, and big picture, honesty, even like Pfizer, it? why can't the CEO of Pfizer come out and be like, Hey, we've we're killed some kids. Money. Yeah. yeah we're or we're to trying to make, make, make money. money. And they can't say that because we're not nurturing a society that rewards honesty or acceptance. No. Yeah, right. No. And, there's a and, I, and I don't I guess, know what the answer is, by the way, I'm just, it's, 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 it's not easy to uh, solve. Yeah. I mean, it's not something that you can just keep, Hey, I screwed up again. I screwed up again. I screwed up again. Sorry, sorry for big things. Right. Um, but yeah, you're not promoting. We're not promoting a society of honesty because people are so afraid that they're going to get canceled, you know, and especially for things they said or did 15 or 20 years ago, right. which I mean, you look at George Washington, for example, he's an awful person because he had slavery slaves. Slavery was awful and it was a terrible thing, but we have to learn from those things. And if we're going to continue to cancel people and try to push them out, how are we going to learn from those things? And they're not going to repeat that cycle again. Like uh, it just, you know, why not, why not? Hey, here, he did these things. Well, he did these things bad. Let's not, let's try to mimic the leadership style that he had where he, instead of, you know, went off the first whim always, he would listen to guys and different people in his circle and make a, an educated decision instead of a snap decision at all times, certain situations, you got to make a snap decision. He wasn't real really good at that um but you know and hey the slavery thing was bad let's let's figure out that that doesn't need to happen again you know so um sevon said uh pickleballs for bitches <laughs> that, that's true uh see sevi uh i told you when i sent you the pickleball ig it's a sport I, i'm not saying there's a lot of stupid sports we, we, we participate in one uh okay <laughs> um uh listen Okay, everyone get, get stop with the pickleball. pickleball. He was watching it because it was Roddick and John McEnroe. Yeah, exactly and listen, and, and Rich 100%. can do anything. The only good thing about pickleball that's ever happened is going to be if Rich actually paints a court. That'll be the first <laughs> uh, good thing that ever happened. Um, Josh Saunders uh, wearing the CEO shirt. Uh, God, he looks a little bit like a, a Latin Tony Budding, doesn't he? Can you see yeah, that? He does, a little bit, yeah. 
Rich, are yeah. you excited for Fresh Coast Fitness Festival? I don't yeah, know what absolutely. That is. What it's is a that? beautiful. It's where uh, that event. I'm going to in Michigan. Going to have some fun. Uh, going back to the homeland, and then I want to. I'm going to try to find a wait for a Tigers game. I'm going to go back to the east side of the state. But man, it's beautiful over on on that side of the western Michigan. Uh, Tiger is game is baseball. Detroit Tigers, yeah. Um, I have a, a selfish question to ask you. I can see that we're coming to our end. Everyone, uh, hang tight. If you have to take a pee break, don't. We're about to get to some really important shit. Enough Deep stuff. First kissing shit. So I've just bought a sled from Rogue. Okay. It is my first sled. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think it's like the dog two or dog whatever. Sled, yep. It's the cheap one, like three fifty, one hundred and ten dollars yep. for shipping. Yep. And it has that pole in the middle, and you can put weights on it. How? What are, what are, do you love a sled? Like, should I be using it three times a week? I'm 51. Love, like, I'm a, you know, it's new equipment. I want to go out there and just push that thing until I break a knee. I off. love to hate it. It's very okay. painful and you can do a lot of different, it's pretty versatile. Um, if you talk to, or if you look at or read a, any of Ben Patrick's stuff, the knees over toes guy, he says every single day you should be pushing or pulling some type of sled. So, every yeah, there's, day. Okay, so says, I've, been leaving, I've been leaving the sled empty of weight. Yep. Pushing it 25 feet, pulling, pulling it in. back 25 feet. That takes about 30 seconds uh, with no weight. And then, and then, uh, and then do that for 20. And then every minute on the minute, do it for 20 minutes is my warm up. But I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm like addicted to this thing. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's super low impact. I think there's a ton of benefit. You get some single leg, uh, pressing and, um, you know, a lot less, you know, in, in our advanced age, advanced mileage, not age mileage. We're not going to talk age, but um, I think, yeah, it's definitely healthy to push a sled. I use it a ton, especially when I'm getting ready to go out west elk hunting. I think there's a ton of crossover with that and climbing those nasty mountains. Um, so, yeah, I, I like a sled. I love, like I said, I love to hate it, really. You know, it's very painful and you can add it into a ton of things and, and make stuff hard um, by using it. Um, what about what about pulling it, um, tying a rope to it? Yep, yep. getting and, it kind of at your waist or, or with your hands pulling. Yeah, I think there's... Rogue makes those handles that you just, you know, attach to it with a carabiner and you pull and throw them on there. You can push it back, pull it back, whatever you want to do, put it around your waist and walk with it. It's a pretty, pretty versatile piece of equipment. And you can do some, like I said, you can, you can make up some nasty combinations with it for sure. What about, um, even for uh, strength, really load that thing up and, and, uh, use it for some accessory on squatting or whatever else you're doing. Uh, Rich, you were awesome on the Cam Haynes podcast. I totally agree. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. Cam was a fun dude. He was a solid, solid dude. You know, it's, it's fun. I'm going to, we'll go back to this legend one second. I, I'm glad you said that. Normally I wouldn't pull up a, a post like this, but you know what I liked on it? It goes back to that tepid thing again. Mm-hmm. It does not matter if someone gives you a wiffle ball bat, like you'll hold it. Like it's like <laughs> everything. You're just like a, a weapon. Yeah, like in just like I could see with the sewing machine, be like, yeah, come here, yeah, I'll sew something, bring that over here. And that's how you were on that podcast too. It's not arrogant at all, but like you get there and it's like, yep, there's Rich in another environment. He feels completely comfortable in. And yeah, you were awesome on it. I think that just comes with age. I think I think, you know, if you look back at some of the first videos we did, me and you even together, being in front of a camera, uh, you're a little bit timid. I mean, I've been doing this for 13 years now, really. And so I've kind of grown in front of it. And I, you know, when we first started and when I first started competing, my biggest fear was speaking in front of people. And now as long as it's a, with a moderator or taking questions from a crowd, I don't want to give up and get, get up and give a 15, 20 minute speech, but a book report on the Federalist papers. Exactly. Maybe I could do that now, you know, like I'm getting there, but I just would rather, I want to know what people want to know, you know, like that's what I, I want them to be interested versus me, you know, stroking my own ego on me talking BS, what I think. So. Um, what, 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 um, what should I do sleds with, um, that it's, that's also legs. What other, I, I mean, obviously it would mix well with like pull-ups and what, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Push pull always. Um, I mean, and can, you can, dude, if what? you, we've done one hundred foot sled push, so 50 down, 50 back and like 15 air squats for 10 rounds. That'll get you right for sure. Okay. You can do that. Oh yeah. hundred percent. It okay. will be uncomfortable and you will not like it, but it'll be a good one. I mean, you can throw a front squat in there. You could thruster. I mean, any, it's any and every combination you can do. It's the beauty of what we do, man. Like you can, you can combine anything and make it bad. You ever had a, a a bicep injury? Yeah. So this left when when I was having this shoulder issue, 
one of the problems I had was the ligament that holds my bicep tendon in its groove is torn. So it, it'll sublux. And so, yeah, I get some bicep -y stuff. I haven't in a while since I've been doing so much shoulder. You get it up high stuff. up here? Well, it starts here and then I'll feel it like rolling at the bottom a little bit, which probably isn't the greatest. Um, but all that PT stuff that I've been doing for my shoulder has helped a ton. But yeah, um, you might have, you have some tendonitis or something in that bicep or. No, I did something really stupid. I, I'm trying, I want to snatch a hundred pound dumbbell Okay. Um, for 10. Yeah. And, um, and I've been fucking around. I, I I heard it three months ago and I was lowering the 70 as slow as I could. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just doing two on the minute for like yeah. 30 minutes while watching some mayhem videos probably and lowering as slow as I could. And something happened on the way down. I woke up in the morning and now it's, it's the longest I've ever not done a pull up in my life. It hurts right here. Yeah. It, like I've never gone a day without doing a pull up my whole life. And now I can't even do one fucking pull up. I mean, I can, but it hurts. Do you have light dumbbells? Yeah. You could do real slow. Tempo. Like two pounders. Yeah, I've been doing Bicep that. Bicep curls. Just yeah. Just to kind of, you know, get everything. It could be a tendon or have you had anybody look at it at all? No bruising no. or anything? No. I'm not a doctor, so I don't don't take my medical advice. But but I have been doing that. Two pound dumbbells. Yeah, you could go even heavier than that too. You know, like add a five or a 10 or something like that. A as long as it doesn't hurt. And, yeah, as long as you're not in a, like a five of pain, you know, like more of just a kind of a dull, then you could definitely do that. Uh, Rob Miller, when are you going to get Andy Stump on? Andy. I can't answer that one. That's you. Thank you. Um, what, when's your podcast starting back up? When, when is, when is your studio getting, um, full? studios done? They're just, I'm dragging my feet on starting it. Uh, dollar 99 Eric wise dad chats with Rish Josh and seven once a month. I have to tell you that I had this really like it, when, when Matt stopped coming on the podcast, I wanted to keep the name of the podcast still, uh, Josh, Matt and seven. And then just all of a sudden have rich start coming on, <laughs> Oh <It'd> be... geez. <laughs> but it was a sensitive time and it, it didn't ever happen, but I really wanted to do it. We just do to dad be... chats. I'd do some dad chats for sure. Uh, what, this uh, last last question. Uh, this picture behind you. Uh, I really like these ladies. Yep, they're good dudes. Yep. They've, uh, uh, but, but but I think that picture. It's time for that picture to come down. No, we just need multiple pictures. You know. All right, all right. We need last year's team. We need to get more in here. So I'm feeling a little. Um, what's the word? Not romantic. Uh, nostalgic. nostalgic yeah yeah and, and kind of like loyal like i'm just bummed that they're on another team now i'm bummed that they went somewhere else i don't blame and, them she's boning yeah, like she's absolutely. boning or married to one of the trainers there right uh nick nick's her husband yeah so, yeah i mean it's sports you know like yeah uh there were some people here that were, their feelings were hurt and i'm like hey people leave sports teams all the time to go to other sports teams there's no i have no hard feelings whatsoever uh i do hope they, hope they do well uh, Me I too. mean, selfishly, I hope Angelo and them beat them. Um, but I, you know, I love Taylor and Andrea and appreciate what they did for us and them being on the team the last two years. So hope they get uh, second though. Uh, Sevi, how does it feel to having to use the opposite hand? I've always <laughs> been ambidextrous in all those activities. Manny C. Serrano, uh, my son, Sebastian, um, left of rich. Oh, in the photo. Oh, that's cool. Oh, nice. Sebastian He's going is going to the U.S. Navy. God bless him. Man, thank you for the service. Stay healthy. Brother, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, what you're awesome. Uh, he, he's bummed. He's uh, he's working with the Hayward Fire Department today. He's got a big oh. – he's got a couple cool big contracts. Good for him. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. So um, that's why he misses so much stuff. He's, he's out there uh, spreading the CrossFit word. Love it. Awesome, bro. Well, come see us. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'll be bugging you again soon. Uh, good luck with semifinals. Don't worry about taking away um, someone's uh, spot. Uh, with Rich and Josh would be awesome talk of current events. I agree. We'd, we'd get canceled. But, yeah. <laughs> On that note. All right, brother. Love you. Bye. Ciao. Love you, too. You heard it. He said, I love you. You heard it. <clears throat> Have a nice lat. And he said, I love you. Okay. Whew. That was hard not to do a podcast this morning. Yeah, he's great, isn't he? What a stud. Judy Reed, hi. Jeffrey, hi.
They knew I was kissing some ass with this shirt. What's wrong with this shirt? Shirt's dope. I got ten of these, as you know. I have ten of these, and I um, I have ten of these, and I have ten of the other one. And they, and all twenty of them hang in my closet. My wife hates it. And you know what they are? They're my nighttime shirts. They're like after I'm. I don't normally wear them ever during the day. After I'm done, like with whatever I'm gonna do, I come home and I'm just like chilling. So I put on a pair of like the. Uh, Silky sweats or some shit in one of these shirts uh, almost every night. Yeah, Sevon's always going after Rich. I I know. What what what, what can I say? Uh, good work, Sevy. I, I there's a few people. Well, I guess I especially Rich. Rob, stop. Robbie, stop. Be cool, man. Be cool. This was a great show. We got to do some damn Bailey talk. Just be cool. Um, Brandon Waddell, the blue check mark, Sevontology. We don't always see Jesus, but when we do, it's rich. Okay, David, we leggings. I don't wear fucking leggings. They're long johns. Long johns in a front shirt. <laughs> yeah, that's my. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm off to uh, Scotts Valley, California now, 20 minutes up the road. Uh, my kids are at skate camp. They have uh, one hour left. Hopefully, I can catch the last half hour. Uh, love you guys. It was cool to see you, uh, Brian on the show. I know a lot of you have said, how come I never invite Brian on uh, when Rich is on? It's usually because I'm so selfish. And I was working out today. I'm like, you know what? I should invite Brian on for a little while. And Brian was hospitable enough to come on, so that was good. Uh we are just to sum up a few things. We are. Uh, it does look like he's going to do semifinals. It does look like he is. Uh, Rich is going to be um, working on a hundred mile mountain biking race. I think it's one of the most famous races in the United States, the Leadville. I think normally it was a run where people ran it alongside a horse or something. I can't remember. Uh, we just saw that uh, he told us that he's reading uh, the biography of George Washington, written by Ron Chernow, R O N C H E R N O W. He told us he loves the sled. He may be playing some pickleball. Um, even the first time he kissed Hillary, he wasn't tepid about it. Um, he was sober. He was on the couch at his mom's house. Uh, those are some of the um, highlights. And uh, I will see you guys Oh, tomorrow morning. David Weck. Time to prepare for David Weck. Oh, you're never going to believe this. Wait till you hear this, who we got on as a guest. There's a guy. Let me see if I can find his Instagram account. UFO God, is that what it is? UFO God. There's a guy coming on the show who is abducted by aliens. Let me see if I can find this. It's on Monday the 10th. He's, he's the author of, of UFO, the uh, author of UFO of God. UFO of God, UFO of uh ufo of god chris bledsoe all right we're gonna find the book chris bledsoe. i'm gonna read this book in the next week i'll pull up his ig here <clears throat> um probably some sacrilege shit you guys are gonna be pissed but here we go uh, this is the author of the book. Uh, Christopher, Christopher spelled out like Christopher, and then L E N T Z Lentz, and then Bled B L E D S. Christopher Bledsoe Senior. Um, it's a uh, let's see. It's a, uh, a spiritual journey of missing time, clouds of fire, healing, and hitchhikers. It, I, I, I read a little synopsis of the book, and I was like, holy shit. Uh, let me see if I can um, find a synopsis for you guys. Anyway, that's going to be on Monday. You want to read this book? The author's going to be on. It's always, it's always better if you've read the book when the author comes on. So now you know. UFO of God's. All right. Uh, was he probed? I have no idea. Uh, 
Uh, Tom, bro, I'm behind, but I can't believe you're going to read the Federalist Papers. I have been preaching federalism on here for months. I know, yes, yes. Greg talked to me about them all the time, too. All right. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, with David Weck of the David Weck Method.